Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into the fuel feeding sequence for each A320 variant. There are many different variations on the fuel tank and feeding system in the A320 family. We will break these down into three major categories, the A319 and A320 CEO, the A320 NEO, and the A321CEO and NEO. The fuel feeding system on the A320 family is fully automatic under normal operations. By turning the fuel pumps on during cockpit preparation, everything else is managed by a computer called the Fuel Level Sensing Control Unit, the FLSCU. Nearly everything is controlled by the FLSCU. It gathers the fuel level and temperature, sequences the feeding and IDG oil cooling, and control the valves and pumps. All of this information is sent to the ECAM SD page. In all variants, the aim is to reduce the wing bending moments. Therefore, the wing fuel is used last and the center tank is emptied first. However, the architecture and feeding sequence logic is slightly different. So let's dive into our first category, the A319 and A320 CEO. Now, this is the fuel system that most A320 pilots are familiar with, as it's the legacy fuel system that the A320 family has been operating with for the majority of its existence. The A319 and A320 CEO aircraft are equipped with inner and outer wing tanks, a center tank, and surge vent tanks. The center tanks on this variant are fitted with center tank electric pumps that feed the engines directly. However, if there is a failure of both center tank pumps, then the entire center tank fuel becomes unusable, as the fuel cannot be gravity fed from the center tanks. This is especially important when it comes to the takeoff phase, and is the reason why the wing tanks must be feeding the engines for takeoff. Let's take a look at the fuel feeding sequence for this variant. The center tanks feed the engines initially. The inner tanks then feed the engines once the slats are extended. After takeoff and 500 kilograms of fuel has been used, the center tank then takes over feeding the engines. Once the center tank has emptied, the inner tanks take back over the feeding. Then once a sensor detects the fuel level in an inner tank has fallen below 750 kilograms, it opens a symmetrical pair of electric transfer valves, one for each wing, and the outer tank fuel transfers to the inner tanks to be used. This event is indicated by the ECAM memo, outer tank fuel transferred, and green triangles appear in the outer tanks on the fuel SD page. The transfer valves, once open, remain open until the next refueling operation. You only need one transfer valve to open for the one in the opposite wing to open. To ensure that the center tank takes priority over the inner tanks when all fuel pumps are running, the center tank fuel pumps operate at a higher pressure of 32 PSI, compared to the inner tank fuel pump pressure of 25 PSI. This is ensured by the pressure relief sequence valves. If the slats are extended and the wing tanks are full, the center tank pumps will not run in auto mode. Next, we will look at the A320neo feeding sequence. The A320neo architecture is almost identical to the previous one. The tanks are the same. There are inner, outer, center, and surge vent tanks. However, the pumps are slightly different. The NEO operates a jet transfer pump system. The wing tank fuel pump pressure flows through the venturi, which then sucks up the fuel from the center tank and then transfers it into the wing tanks. Because the jet pumps do not feed the engines directly, there is now no slat logic for the feeding sequence. On this variant, the wings will always feed the engines and there will be no direct feeding from the center tank. Let's take a look at the fuel feeding sequence. The inner tanks feed the engines initially and for takeoff. After takeoff and 500 kilograms of fuel has been used, the center tank feeds fuel to the inner tanks via the jet pumps to use up the center fuel. Once the center tank has emptied, the inner tanks take back over. 
Then once a sensor detects the fuel level in an inner tank has fallen below 750 kilograms, it opens a symmetrical pair of electric transfer valves, one for each wing, and the outer tank fuel transfers to the inner tanks to be used. The logic is fairly similar, except that the center tank is not able to directly feed the engines. Now let's take a look at the last category, the A321. The A321, both CEO and NEO, has a rather different tank architecture to the first two categories, but employs a very similar logic to the A320 NEO in terms of fuel feeding logic. Let's take a look. The A321 gets rid of the inner and outer tanks and simply merges them into one wing tank per wing. It also has a center tank and surge vent tanks. The A321 utilizes the same jet transfer pumps as the A320neo to transfer fuel from the center tank to the wing tanks and follows a very similar logic. Let's take a look at the fuel feeding sequence. The wing tanks feed the engines initially and for takeoff. After takeoff and 250 kilograms of fuel has been used, the center tank feeds fuel to the wing tanks via the jet pumps to use up the center fuel. Once the center tank has emptied, the wing tanks take back over the feeding. The main differences to note are as follows. There are no outer to inner transfer valves as the inner and outer tanks are merged into wing tanks. The center tank is engaged slightly sooner after takeoff, after 250 kilograms has been used, compared to 500 kilograms used for the A320. Again, there is no slat logic incorporated into the feeding logic as the center tank never feeds the engines directly. On the A321, the center tank jet transfer pumps will remain open for five minutes after the center tank low level has been reached to ensure that all usable fuel has been utilized. If both center tank jet pumps have failed closed, a portion of the center tank fuel can be gravity fed into the wing tanks. However, a total of 2,000 kilograms will remain in the center tanks and is now unusable. This is especially relevant when in the emergency electrical configuration, whereby 2,000 kilograms of the center tank fuel becomes unusable. Thanks for tuning into this bite-sized tutorial on the fuel feeding sequence. Thank you.